Hey, thank everyone for tuning in tonight. We appreciate it. My name is Bill Talbert, and uh, from time to time, I'll do an interview or a podcast. And this is tonight a special guest, a special friend of mine. Has been for a long time, known each other a long time ago, but we didn't, but we did. And then we got around each other a little more and uh, know each other pretty good now. We got a lot of friends that we know together. But Ronald Blanton. Everybody calls him Bubba. That's him right there, the guy waving. Um, so he has written a movie script, and uh, he's been picked up by some producers uh, and some folks that are going to make this uh, dream of yours possible. Uh, uh, passion project. Your passion project. He calls it a passion project. And uh, everybody has a passion, but this is uh, Bubba's uh, passion. And, and we're going to get him to talk to us a little bit about that tonight. Uh, so that you can have a good idea of what this is coming. And the name of the movie will be called? Prime. Prime, which is on the front of his shirt right there, which is, uh, that's the hoodie um, with the boxing gloves on it. And we should have it on the screen, I'm pretty sure, uh, so you'll be able to see it. But I'm going to ask him some questions about what he's doing, and uh, so you can get a good idea of what to look for in the future to come, I believe. And I'm going to kind of jump ahead here for a second. I believe the projected time for the filming to start will be in January of 21? Uh, February. February of 2021. So y'all be on the lookout for that. And we'll keep you up, and we'll do other podcasts with Bubba um, uh, throughout this time to try to keep you updated and give him a chance to, to update you on where they are with everything, but also the progress that he is having uh, and pulling everything completely together. So... When you wrote this script, um, how long? I actually wrote the story. You wrote the story. I'm the creator. Okay. And, Here we I, go. and I had the script written by right. somebody professional that that's what they do. I got you. So, so. I, I wrote the story. Story. And had the script written. Kind of hard to uh, separate the story and the script, but you know, for some people. But if you wrote a story, that's where the compassion and the passion comes in. Right. From your heart and what you lived through. I personally know you've been through a lot of physical stuff, and we'll get into that a little bit. But the script was written, like you said, by a professional that has written many scripts. Uh, and he took your story and formed it into a script type of manner so it could be, be produced into a movie. Yeah, he put it into a film format. Film yeah. format. See, that's why he's here. I'm just asking the questions. I'm like you. So when you wrote <coughs> the story... My a question I had right off the bat was, what what drove you to writing this particular story? Well, one, I've always been a big boxing fan, uh, an and boxing movie fan, um, and this movie has not just a story that everybody that watches it will relate to, yeah, but it also has. A lot of elements for a lot of people, you know, not just the main character. And it's kind of metaphored it off of my life. Wow. My actual, you know, things that's happened to me, I just put them in a different twist in a, a boxing genre. And to do something like this with this particular story, it seems to me it talks about being driven. Oh, yes. Um, do you think a lot of people today are have they have issues about how they're being driven or they're looking for something that will drive them to get to another level? Absolutely. Um, everybody wants a hero. Everybody wants somebody they can look up to or aspire to be like. Um, in creating this, I want this character to do that for people. You know, not, not to go boxing. But if you find something in life that you're passionate about, just keep doing it. Who cares what everybody else says? You know, the naysayers will drag you down and put your feet in concrete. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> uh, you know, but if, if you've got enough drive and you move enough, you can break that concrete. Well, it kind of tickles me how you laid that out because the word prime means you've got to be primed to be able to go forward and, and achieve these things. Especially the uh, the passion that you're talking about. Yeah. You know, Bob, I know so many people that have a passion for things, but they don't know how to get to that next step 
but the passion they have to uh, to help form that dream so it will come true. A lot of that depends on how hungry you are. That's a really great point right there. Uh, obviously, you're pretty hungry with what you're talking about here in the movie Prime that you're, you guys are working on. And But people that hear you say that should know you can have a passion, but are you really hungry for that passion? Right. It's kind of what that leads me to think. Um, There's no half measures in success. So what you're saying there, obviously, is that uh, if you're going to succeed, you have to be 100% in plus maybe 120%. All in or all, all out. All in or all out. In life that we live in, man, you and I both know is hard. And and if you're not all in, then you're all out. That's right. And, and that's what I believe you did uh, as you have taken your passion and formed it into a, a goal, a, a dream. Uh, uh, but you made it, you're making it into a reality, you know. I heard something one time years ago, and I and I, I stick by it and believe in it. How do you eat an elephant? How do you eat an elephant? I want to hear this one. One bite at a time. One bite at a time. That's good. One bite at a time. Well, that's a definitely a good way to put it. Lord so, knows I did not get in the physical condition I'm in right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, all yeah. at once. Because you went through some some major physical damage over the years. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> you want to get into a little bit of that right now, or you want to uh, just hold back? Uh, I was a motorcycle officer in 2009, and I got hit, and it did a lot of a lot of damage, not just physically, but emotionally too. Yeah. Um, and took years to get past it, and then this idea comes along. And it gave me something to strive for. You know, I got into acting about four years ago and just kind of floated along, not knowing what I'm doing. And this gave me the drive to figure it out, learn, research, and push. And I found that drive I used to have as a, a young man. <laughs> and I forgot I had it. And it, it, it reignited something that I needed in my life. You know, you said something right there that really triggers me as the drive that you had as a young man. And obviously you're older now, we all are than we were, but all of a sudden you feel like you have that drive back? And then some. And then some. Is that due to, one, we know your passion is a very strong element there, but what I guess you had to work out and that was had to be really uh, a painful for you in a lot of ways on your body because, you know, you and I have had a lot of discussions through this period of time and sometimes you'd call me on the phone or I'd find you and call you and some of the stuff you told me you were doing, I'm going, oh my gosh, man, I'd have to sleep for a week after that, you know? Um, I'm kind of on a cycle. Go, 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 crash. <laughs> go, 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 crash. And That's get good. up and do it again. Um, I actually have reassembled my entire life around this movie. I started my own business so I could have flexible schedule to train and work the hours I need to work so I can get ready for this and, ho and be, hire be able to hire somebody when it's time to film so they can run it for me because I have put everything into this. You know, a person, if a person puts everything into what they're doing, and they give it their all and their best, and like you said, all in or all out. And if you're all in, uh, you and I both know eventually, if you don't give up, that you will achieve your goal. You will achieve. You will achieve a goal. Past change. But if you if you work hard, I've I've found this in the last year, year and a half. I've been working on this movie for three years. Um, but the last year, year and a half has been goal oriented for the movie. And I've discovered that when you get out and start working hard and you put your heart into something, the toxicity in your life will fade. It will go away. And it begins to purify and simplify. And it makes it so much easier to just push forward 
and you never know what's going to come across your path. Uh, I mean, I got my producer from one of my customers. Wow. From a gas station parking lot. A chance meeting. Well, I'm just going to say this without getting any deeper on this end, but uh, you know, it wasn't by chance. It was meant to be. I, I believe and, that. And I believe because of your passion and your all in and the drive that you have gotten back that uh, it was provided for you to meet this producer that needed to be there. And, and my passion for this project sold him on it. You know, it's amazing how you just said that because if somebody like him could see your passion and, and can, 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 feel, can feel the, the passion inside of I you that you have. I haven't even met him face to face yet. Just on the phone, huh? Yeah. Just talked? Wow. You know, <laughs> that's the kind of things I talk all the time to people and say, look, you need to kind of lead by example there and, and stay strong and go forward and don't give up, you know? Just continue, continue to go forward. Um, it just, it just amazes me how you just you have never given up because I know what happened to you a long time ago physically. Just about taking you out, but you overcame it. I guess that was sheer, sheer willpower on your part, or the yeah. drive. Yeah, and yeah, I was told I'd never walk again. You'd never walk again. Now I'm running three to five miles a day. I was told I would never be able to carry on a normal conversation because of a brain injury. Wow. Now and here, here we sit. And you're beating the odds now. So I know when you're training, because you've been doing a lot of boxing training, and I, you enjoy boxing anyway, I guess. Right. Um, how many hours a week do you think you put in? Training. Now I know I'm just talking about boxing. I'm not talking about how much you run, because you run a lot. <laughs> Anywhere from ten to twenty hours a week of training. Wow. And and run a business. Yes. That's a that's a you don't have any, you have any time for uh, to sleep. <laughs> On the way to training. On the way to training. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope somebody else is driving, okay? I hope somebody else is driving. You know, you started telling me about this, about this, uh, this story, and, and how and the, the producer came into play. How uh, it's a great situation is developing now for this to definitely um, take place. This story in a movie setting, so that people can you can share with them passion, what passion is about. Um, and you being in your prime, now tell me where the word prime came from as um, far as this movie's concerned. The word prime, I, I named the movie Prime because it's a middle-aged boxer. He's in his mid-40s. He's been boxing since he was a kid, uh, 20 years, 20-plus uh, years. And he's pro, but he's, life kind of gets in the way for him, so he hasn't been able to really couldn't afford to, to pay a trainer like he needed to right. to get where he needed to be. Just kind of a natural talent depended on that. Um, and something happens. I can't give away what, but something happens. <laughs> you don't want to do that yet. That, that triggers uh, a different level of yeah. training for him. Uh, it ignites his drive and He's always had the passion for boxing, but kind of lost the drive for it, just kind of going through the motions training, and something happens that fires him up. And he gets in his, the best, he gets in his prime condition in his midlife, and starts knocking people out, and gets noticed. And it kind of just snowballs from there for him. Here we go again with the drive, and the, and the passion, and the prime, of the life of the of the particular individual, which will be you, right? You're going to be the guy uh, that's going to be um, in this movie. It, it is a movie about a boxer, and boxing is in it. But it's more about the background of his life, everything that goes on that can that would stop most people from doing what they love doing. 
to do what they have to do and not put the two together and he manages to do it all you know he keeps his passion for the boxing it's kind of what keeps him sane right. in a crazy life and it's more about his life than it is the boxing but it is a boxing movie there will be fights yes <laughs> I'm sure there will be. We will be hitting each we other. We will be hitting each other. So, you know, I know you're not going to get real deep into this movie, but can you give us just a, maybe a little bit of uh, how this thing kind of plays through and not even, not the ending. Not, I'm not talking about getting real detailed. I'm just, just a little bit of a, a hint for these people to look forward to. Uh I didn't, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. But, uh, <laughs> well, but yes, I did. <laughs> All right. It, 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 it plays out. Everything starts turning in his favor. And it has, I'll, I'll just say, it, he's a heck of a fighter in the movie. He fights some stiff, hard competition. It's going to be fun to watch. And the end of the movie, just be ready for it. So it sounds to be somewhat action-packed. It, there will be action, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of emphasizing that. A lot of people like action-packed type movies. And there, there will be some some great, great fight scenes. I've got a great boxing coach. Uh, got an uh, assistant coach who's really good. They were both champs in their time. Uh, and they have really worked with me uh, to transform me from an overweight 236 pound guy with a vision to a 177 pound animal in the gym. So let me ask this question then. What is your body fat at right now? When I started. There we go, that's where I was going. When I started, I was 236 <laughs> pounds at 49% body fat. 49%? Wow. And right now I'm sitting at 177 at 12%. And I've done that since January 1st of this year. Wow. I, I can't leave out uh, my strength and endurance coach who I'm not, I don't go to him anymore, but I was going to see him two to three times a week. And he really pushed me to beyond what I thought I was capable of. You know, I, it takes a lot of physical training to get ready for a boxing movie, especially since you're actually going to be boxing and, and, and all this. So you have to eat a particular way. You have to <laughs> be sure you get plenty of rest. Yeah, don't eat nothing you like. No, don't eat anything you like. <laughs> I've removed, <laughs> I have removed all sodas, um, basically live on water and juice and milk. Um, saturated fat I stay away from that completely uh, I, I meal prep every Sunday night Wow uh, for the whole week yeah which is all fresh vegetables fresh meat uh, cod shrimp beef or chicken and it's all fresh from the butcher nothing prepackaged and no eating out so you don't do any process though not anymore no. <laughs> I just had to say that it sounds and like you're getting you're getting the real deal there. Yeah. And uh, removed alcohol too. That was a. That's and a don't big, miss it. You don't miss it. No. Well, you know when you when you're when you're really fighting for your passion, and you're really wanting to, to, uh, to reach that passion. And you're able to share it with some other folks. You want to be sure they get the jest or the truth of how you had to get there uh, because it's not just uh, you know, people call it sacrifice sacrifice is a great word for it's that. not sacrifice if it's a trade-off yeah it's a trade-off for if you have a spot you want to be right and but you're here and these habits keep you here you trade these habits for better habits to get here. Depends on how bad you want it. And that's where the passion is. If you consider comes. it a sacrifice, you don't want to be over here that bad. 
So a person, and I know we're talking about the movie, but also we're talking about character, we're talking about drive, we're talking about passion. So now we're at the point of sacrifice. So in this movie, the movie Prime, it, it will be where you're, uh, that individual had to sacrifice a lot in his life because he, he still had that, he got that drive back and, and he was sacrificing everything around him that, so that he could achieve and, and win and, and, and make it all the way or as far as he could with everything that he had in him. There's a scene in the movie that I put in there. I get emotional talking about it. I will give this one away. He works a construction job and works 12 to 13 hours a day and goes and trains for three to four to five hours a night. Wow. And I've been doing that. That's the life I've been living. And there was a scene in the movie where his teenage daughter in the movie, uh, she doesn't live with him, she, but she comes to see him and he's exhausted to the point where he's passed out in the floor. He didn't make it to the couch. And she covers him up. You know, it's kind of a little wow. touching emotional moment. And I put that in there because it happened. Wow. I, I push till I drop. And my daughter, who's 21 now, came by the house, and I wasn't, I wasn't on the floor, but I was sitting in front, on the floor in front of my entertainment center. I just sat down to rest for a minute and passed out right there. You were exhausted. Beyond exhaustion. You and, know, and she came in and tried to wake me up and couldn't and just covered me up and left. You know, just hearing you tell that, kind of makes me put myself in that position, in that place of what you just said. And I wonder how many people that were gonna, or will be able to see this, will be able to relate to it in some way. You know, those are the kind of things that people in this world need to know about and hear about. You know, when movies are made, I think, you know it a lot better than I do, but when movies are made, people look at them and you watch them and you say, Wow, is that how life really is? Some movies, yes. And some movies, when you watch them, you just know it's going to be something horribly unrealistic but fun to watch. That's not the kind of movies I want to make. I want to make movies that grab your attention and go, this needs to be paid attention to. You're trying to help somebody's life change, aren't you? Yes. Absolutely, yes. And You know, it may even change the family. Because what, so. what if they have a child, a son or a daughter that has a passion and they have the drive but they're not able to utilize that drive and they don't know how to take that next step. So what you got, you have me thinking already is by the time this movie is done and they're able to watch it, they will be able to see this and say, you know what? I can do that. I can do that too. That's, that's me. And I see, I see these younger kids or people watching it or anybody thinking just that. I want people to walk out of watching this because we're, we're aiming for a, a theater release, not just straight to DVD. I want a theater release on it. Maybe limited, but what is what we're aiming for. Um, I want people to walk out energized, feeling like they could go out and do whatever they wanted. Well, you know, you also saying that makes me think of the few times that I've, or times that I've been to movies, should I say, uh, and I, I've come out and walked to my car, and the whole time I'm walking out, I'm just very quietly thinking, or I'm not saying anything, but I'm thinking because it captivated me that much. And that's what your movie, Prime, is making me feel like already because that story you just told about the daughter and covering you up and in the movie, you know, covering covering him up and um, I mean it amazes me for what it takes for somebody to realize uh, just how important passion is having that passion and, and, and I keep coming back to the word prime because of course the movie's called prime but it, you have to kind of get prime to get where you need to get to get that drive and when people hear that word they think physical 
100% physical, abs and big shoulders and big neck or, you know, a physically fit woman. No, they're in their prime. What if they're a mess up here? So if they're a mess up here, I mean, I'm going to ask you this question. And they have this drive and this passion, but they're a mess up here. If they can physically get where they need to be, which they need to release you know, whatever's I have there. A, a great analogy for that. Well, you go right ahead. What if you have this amazing Ferrari sitting in your yard? Beautiful paint job, beautiful rims, nice stereo, but it, two cylinders are blown. What's it worth? Well, let's put it this way you need to fix it. <laughs> you got to straighten the engine out. So, that just completes the whole drive. No pun intended. But you, you, you have to, if you're truly in your prime, you can focus mentally on what you need to do to be able to keep going physically. And that's what I've had to do. So, as the movie goes along, you will be facing all types of obstacles that's going to look like, and I'm not trying to give anything away because I haven't seen any more or, or looked at any script. I'm just kind of going off of what you're telling me here. Uh, you're going to get, you're going to run into some obstacles and it's going to, that's where you're going to be tested. Is your passion really true? Is your drive really there? That's what that makes me think about. Am I on the right track with that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, um. But what is life other than one big test? That's true, too. But it's going to test you every single day, and especially when things are going good. That's when you get the curveballs thrown at you. And how you deal with them says a lot about you. And I'll be the first to tell you, I have not always dealt well. <laughs> but... When you wrote this story, you were obviously on a, let me see if I can put this right, you were on the, on the mend, so to speak, or wanting to be, you were wanting to, to get yourself to a different place. But this story came to you because it's, your, it's, it's a story that you somewhat lived, if not a lot, but you thought and you were given this vision and this dream and this passion to go ahead and write the story that was in your heart. Just by, just by, by say a few things in your life that has happened, that you, and, and it, to me it's like you took bits and pieces of your life and then you just kind of filled in the blanks. That's right, that's exactly what I did. And, and that's what it really felt to me when you were. I will say this, this movie, the story of this movie has something in it everybody will relate to men women kids so what you're telling me there and what I what I'm hearing from you right now is this particular type of movie or this particular movie uh, may be one that even helps mend some families I hope so and, and what I, I, I feel from that is because it takes everybody to come together for it to work yes but one is driven, and the others feel that drive and that passion, and it develops. Every train got to have an engine car. Every train got to have an engine car. I'm full of those. I can do this all day. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so what about the caboose? <laughs> you want to ride the train? Let's ride the train. I'm just picking at you. I grew up as a train kid, okay? Somebody got to bring up the rear. <laughs> well, that's a good point. See, you got, I got a million of these, he said. But you know, um, one thing that I believe that, and knowing you as well as I do, I believe that your passion is not to necessarily get out and do this movie after the story you have written because you want to go get rich and famous. That's not what this is about to you because I know you well enough to know that you are the kind of person that with your passion is like it is, that you're putting this together so others can be, uh, be helped by this movie possibly yes uh, there's some movies that I've seen that have really touched me and it actually made me change my life and that's what I see yours doing to me even and to others um, 
I couldn't tell you. My Facebook has grown leaps and bounds. I maxed out. I had to start a different page for people. They started following my my workouts. They started following my movies that I do. Um, and it's I get if I don't post anything for a week now, I start getting messages. Is everything okay? Are you okay? <laughs> It's kind of it's it's kind of cool. I can't lie, but um, well, it, it, but yeah, I, I'm I've been I get all the time. You're an inspiration. And, and that has nothing to do with the movie. That is just me getting putting in the time and the effort and making the time to get back in shape. You know, that's a that's a key point that you just made right there. Because how many people do you know? You don't have to tell me how many, but I'm using it for an analogy, if you would. Do you know that they work so hard, they have their families, but then they go sit down and they all, oh, I'm tired. But they have that drive, they just can't get up and move. But they see you doing all the same things, but this drive that you have. I just get up early. You just go get up early, okay? But you find a way to make it work. That's where I was going with that. You find a way. Everything that some people do, it's a trade-off. They can find a way if they really want to do it, and that's where the passion comes in, that's right? It. And when the passion is there and they have found the way, they Arnold, get primed. Arnold Boom. Schwarzenegger said it best. The human body only truly needs six hours of sleep. Anybody who says they need eight, just sleep faster. Just sleep faster. That's, that's a direct quote. Well, that's a good way to put it. That's a direct <laughs> quote from a world champion bodybuilder and movie star and governor. Everything he's everything he's done, he's done well. Yes, and and he, I've watched him over well, the years grow. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. That's that's right, um, but you know, you you make me think too about this movie, and what my mind's already seeing it develop as what it's the story is being laid out, somewhat as you'll give us what little bit we can have. <laughs> uh, by the way, folks, we're going to come back and do this some more. We're going to try to get uh, his, his trainer in to explain how. Um, he had uh, something come up and couldn't make it tonight. Yeah, he had something come up. Okay. But we're going to try to get him in here uh, on another program because uh, we're going to try to do these segments or these podcasts as this movie develops and goes along. Um, Bubba will let me know, and we will uh, keep you updated on it. We're not ending right now. I just want to be sure you know that uh, – that we're going to continue to go forward because we want to put all this together so you can keep up with it. So when the movie comes out, you will go see it, you will go buy it, and that's, no, we're not here to sell it. But one thing that all this leads me to is this right here, is that you have these kids, say they're in high school. You have them in middle school. You know, they want to go to college. They have all these aspirations and, and these, these visions of things they want to do. And what you're doing is making it come, to, you're, you're making it a reality basically for them. Showing them, say, okay, well, I'm watching this movie, but this guy's compassionate, and it makes me want to go and take that next step to become what I really wanted to do. Uh, so that is, but I'm thinking about these kids that hopefully, and I'm praying that these kids will uh, be able to be influenced even in their school years with their work. Okay, there's a passion there. I want to go to college. Well, you got to work hard in school to get to college. Well, you got to work hard and train in a boxing ring and run and take time and, and eat right and eat things you don't want to eat, like you said, and, and, and not, uh, we become complacent. I know I'm just talking here, but I've got, these things keep coming to my mind and my heart. But people become complacent to where they lose their drive. But it sounds like that you at one time were complacent. You know something I did to make myself get out of the house? What is that? Because at one point, that's all I did, stay in the house. Did nothing. Watch Netflix all day. What brought you out? I discovered that the couch was my worst enemy. That's so what I did. Very well put. Y'all will laugh at this, but it's the truth. You do what you have to do when you know yourself well enough to change. You know you need to change, so you take steps to change. So I just went and emptied my hall closet 
and put it all on the couch where I couldn't sit down. When I came in, I couldn't sit down. <laughs> so I had to do something. So I turned the TV off. Started doing push-ups. Started doing sit-ups. Started lifting weights. And then when I cleaned the couch off, I didn't want to sit back on it. So you had to make yourself develop that drive. Yes. But you had the passion. You had to make yourself develop the drive. You have to have passion, drive, and direction. And when you get to a, the prime of your life, um, you take a person that's 21, oh, you're, you're doing well, you're young, you can go, and then you get to be 31, and then your 40s, you're kind of up in the prime of your life up in there. People have dif different definitions for prime you know, in their life. I am 100% in the prime of my life right now. You feel good? Physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, I'm where I should have been a long time ago. It just took a lot to get here. It took a lot of heartache, blood, breaks, tears, it has not been an easy road. Um, I actually had to do physical therapy for horrible shin splints. If you've never had shin splints, talk to somebody who's had, who has, because they're horrible. Uh, but they thought I was going to have to have surgery. And this was while I was training for this movie. I was overweight, and I started running and tried to do too much, and it was too much on my legs. And I damaged them. I had to do six weeks of physical therapy. In March, I think it was. It takes a lot of drive to go through all that. So I would leave the boxing club, which Augusta Boxing Club, done on Walton Way, by the way, uh, full sponsor of the movie. But I would go train. I would still go run with shin splints, horrible shin splints. So I would go train, go run, then train, and then go to physical therapy. You know, when you, when this movie, when the filming starts, I know that's when the adrenaline starts pumping a little more, and things really start to come to light. And then you go all the way through this movie, and you get to the end of it, and you finish it. And they pick it up. And they look at it and they go, wow, this is, this is really true about life and people in this world. Look at the time that we're in right now. Uh, it's going on with all the mess in the world. You've got to have a passion right now. You've got to. But it's so hard to keep that passion right now. As a, as a society, we have become so comfortable just being able to go get what we want when we want. Now Walmart closes at eight. <laughs> it's thrown off a lot of people. See, you and I, we remember when what closed at six. Uh, yeah. And it, it's it kind of threw us back to a different time. Yeah. And for one, I'm thankful it did. It brought this this mess. What whatever agenda they're pushing or anything they're doing I'm not saying it's not real it is but it brought families closer together because they had to spend time together and that's a great point too that you made there because again they become complacent I, I've seen more people walking in my neighborhood over the last four or five months I get, there's people out running now golf carts riding around with elderly people on them getting out of the house people are just getting out and doing things that we did years ago. And people got away from that because we as a society try to make things easy and now and here and right here, right now. And we can't do that now. And that's why it's hard for people after they've been working so much and so hard and so long and they, the ones that don't get out though, they're sitting in a house. Then they get depressed and then there's anxiety it just, I'm just throwing in the elements of life that drags people down. And it's so hard for them to get back up 
and goes because they, they know, kind of become creatures of habit. One of the reasons I chose boxing for this movie because in my opinion and to me, boxing is just a wonderful analogy for life. It's you versus life. Best man wins. And in boxing, you standing across from your opponent, and I've learned so much over the last eight months training with Ray and uh, Ricky Ham. Sorry, Ricky Ham Ham, but <laughs> um, both fantastic guys and great boxers. Just great, great talent in boxers. Uh, but they've taught me so much, and and I relate in my mind. I relate it all back to life, because life's gonna swing at you. Good point. You have to be able to to move and get out of the way and you got to be able to take some hits and keep going. See, I think that's some great advice on your part because it also talks about life that people are going to take hits in life and they've got to be able to take those hits in order to go. It makes you stronger. So my question now, since you said that, um, how these guys have really been dedicated to helping you develop. And you're in a ring and you're possibly sp boxing with these guys. And you know how great they are. You know they could just take that one punch and you know. They could rip me apart. You might go ahead and take a nap real quick kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But how, how, how do you change, how do you develop your mind so, and not be intimidated at the same time? You know what I'm saying? And be able to box with these guys, knowing what they could do so you keep your mind focused on, I've got to do this. Uh, I've, I've, I've got to watch what they're doing and learn and take the punches, just whatever I need to do here. That's where your passion comes in to me. Well, I, when I, if I go in, I have sparred with Ray uh, once or twice. And the word fast does not even describe it. Uh, so I just get in the ring knowing I'm going to get hit a lot. <laughs> and I focus on keeping my feet right, keeping a stable base so I can take that hit and give some back. So talking about taking a hit, I'm going to go a little bit further with this. When you're in a ring in the movie and you guys are filming, right? you're actually going to take some hits, aren't you? Oh, yeah. And things may go a little bit out of line because of the hit you had to take. But all this training you're doing right now and where I'm going, you know where I'm going with this, is going to help you to have enough determination, stamina, if you would, endurance, to be able to withstand an impacted hit. Well, the thing is, we're going to know what's coming. It's going to be choreographed, of course. And it's, but not going to change the fact it hurts to get hit. <laughs> We're going to be hitting each other. We're just going to know what's coming. So let me get a little more complicated with you then. I told you don't sit in here with me because I'll ask you some questions. Um, but yeah, the training, Yeah, you, you have to have the training to know what to do and know what they're talking about. All right. I'm going to flip around here for a second. You're taking some hits. It's choreographed. How do you make it look so real? training and we're, and going to, we're going to have to do a lot of work in the ring to get the movement get everything right and I'm sure there'll be some open there's a good chance things get carried away I just if it doesn't I hope we get it caught on film that Duke don't hurt me too bad <laughs> <laughs> well my opponent he, he, he fights under uh, I'm not sure of his real name I'm ashamed of that but he goes by Duke he is a pro boxer uh, who fights out of the Augusta Boxing Club? He's going to be playing my opponent. Wow. Um, he's going to, he fights at 135. He's going to beef up to about 165, and I'm coming down to about 175, hopefully 165. So we might actually match up. Will be he be the only one you'll be fighting in the movie? No. No. But he's, he's the main one? Yes. So it's like you'll, he'll, be, he'll be your opponent? Appointed. Opponent early, and and the early on, and then maybe you'll end up he'll, he'll be your opponent opponent again. 
don't have to don't don't get detailed just we'll see right we'll see complicated history with those okay two. good just leave it right there so what will be your fight name in this movie uh demar the brick dorado where did that come from you want the truth well it depends on what you want to tell us <laughs> <laughs> uh Demore, I put a lot of thought into that one because I want something that sticks with you and something that just kind of rolls off the tongue and it's just kind of easy to say. And that is Demar, or Demar, however you want. And the brick came, the character hits like he's got bricks in his gloves and that's what he got named because of how hard he hits. Dorado, perfectly honest, I was stuck on the last name. I flipped open a map stuck my finger down and it landed on Dorado. Dorado. Demar, the brick, Dorado. I think that's pretty good. What do you think? You think that's good? I did too, man. We actually have brick on my training locker at the oh, club. Oh, do you? Yeah. Brick. Brick. On, on, on my training locker at my mom and dad's house, it's called Hardhead. <laughs> <laughs> but I that, like brick. That, that should be on every one of our lockers. <laughs> that's right. Well, Folks, I'm not going to take it any further here because Bubba, the brick, has spent some time with us and kind of, we kind of broke the ice here. And we're going to come back and do some more. We're going, to, we're going to go a little further and we're going to get a little deeper. But he's not ever going to tell you the whole story nope. on gotta this go, podcast. Got to go watch it when it comes out. That's right. And we want to be sure. That, but we, the reason we're here is because I wanted to be sure that you heard what he's doing because of his, comp uh, of his passion that he has for what he's doing in this movie and the passion that you may have in something with your life, that the drive that you can pick up will help you become who you want to be and be successful. That they say something at the club all the time. What is that? Hard work beats talent. So everybody must work hard. Anyway, I thank y'all for listening tonight. Demar the Brick Dorado, right here. I call him Bubba. I don't mean he's from the country, but yes, he does, does live in the country. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it does. Uh, he's a, he's a great man, and uh, I look forward to y'all watching us again. So just kind of tune back in when you can, and uh, we'll try to let you know when it's coming. Well, we will update you when we get a little further. And uh, we're just going to tease you. We're going to tease you each time. So you will make a point to watch it. And, uh, but we thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Bill Talbert. This is Ronald Blanton, Bubba, Demar the Brick Dorado. Check him out. This guy lost a lot of weight quick to get where he's at right now in his size. It's incredible. Last time I saw him, uh, he wasn't this... Then. <laughs> so no, I was not. But we really appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, Ray will get in here with us sometime when he can, and we'll sit down and talk with him and really get the, the gist, if you would, of what it takes to train to be a boxer. Uh, and, and what really excites me is the fact that you have to train as hard as a pro boxer would have to yeah. train to be able to do this movie. And that is so interesting to me. But it applies to so much in everybody's life. Um, you will be good at whatever you work at. You just can't stop. You have to keep working. You have to keep working. Well, thank you again for being with me tonight. And that's just kind of having a good conversation about your movie, your story. That is becoming a movie. And, and you're just... I'm going to use the word you're being blessed right now with so many opportunities. And you said something a little while ago, and, you know, I've kind of known to pick up on little words here and there. And your spiritual life as well has increased, and I'm not trying to really get into that. But I'm saying that is part of a person's success. It's what's inside, man. And, you know, there it is. So I'm just really thankful that you allowed me to sit down with you tonight and do this. And I appreciate you doing it. You folks just... Uh, We'll let you know when we're going to come back on, and there'll be some more. So y'all have a great night, and uh, we thank you. We'll see you later. Uh, one little plug. One little plug. Ronald Bubba Blanton on Facebook. Feel free to send me a friend request or get on my uh, 
fans and friends page. Can they get these hoodies, by the way? Um, if somebody wants one, yes, we'll, we'll have them made up. Have to contact you right on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Yes. T-shirts, too? T-shirts, too. Magnets to go on the side of the car, prime, uh, the whole works? Uh, make whatever I'm just they want. <laughs> uh, and when we get a little further along, I'll have my opponent's uh, name coming out there, too, so everybody can wear. Oh, that's choose awesome. What, choose what team they want. Oh, that's awesome right there. <laughs> we're going to go. We're, we're going to go. Team Dorado <laughs> for now. So we appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Thanks a million. Good night to y'all. We appreciate you being with us. We'll see you later.